Zurich, day two. We're going live again. I'm working for Jaguar Racing, or should I say its correct title is Panasonic Jaguar Racing, uh, to present the live show for their Formula E team during the first ever Zurich E Prix. What's really cool about this race is that Switzerland hasn't had a race for 64 years. So uh, quite a monumental moment. If you're wondering why, circuit racing was banned a long time ago. Uh, they're really big here on Switzerland on hill climbs, which is ours, but circuit racing, not so much. Anyway, we now need to make our way through all of this. We have to go in through the back entrance, find the Jaguar team, see what's what. Thanks very much. Thank you. Some part of the circuit's brand new, like the yes. resurfaces, so it's like base bottom, you know, it's right. super smooth. And on that area, has it got more grip, grip too? Yeah, it's got more grip. Right. And then wow. turn one, so basically the last sector in turn yeah. one, yeah. it's still old surface, like right. tram lines and stuff, so <laughs> you you've, got, you've got everything. <laughs> All sorts everything. of stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Right, well, if I don't see you, thank you. good luck. Thanks, mate. And we'll uh, catch up afterwards. Yeah, we'll do it. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Nate. Barriers are open. Back on it again. Yeah. About to drop my latest album. All right, that's it. The live is done. Uh, that basically means most of my uh, official duties for Jaguar for the rest of the day are done, which means we can immerse you in the first uh, Formula E race in Zurich. And as you can see, we are very much behind the scenes here. Everything's a very much a tight squeeze at Formula E because we are in cities, so everything's sort of crammed in. So this is pretty interesting. Normally when you're in the pits with these things on, it helps with all of the noise. It helps to drown out the sound of the cars, but of course, um, there is no sound <laughs> for Formula E cars. So I also believe that uh, Zurich now has the longest straight in Formula E, and it is massive. I was just upstairs in the hospitality area goes into the horizon it's huge I'm not sure if you picked up on earlier but we were talking to Mitch before he went out uh, he was saying that it's really bumpy you can actually hear it when you're watching the cars along the track you can hear that there's their skid plates skipping along the floor so it goes from perfectly flat brand new tarmac uh, and then changes suddenly to like more conventional old-school streets of zero tram lines I mean there's no other race in the world that has such varying track conditions. You can see the cars that skip it along the road. <laughs> Looks like Mitch just got P1. Alright, so that's the qualifying over. Mitch has maintained his first place, which means he's going through to Super Pole. So what happens is the top five drivers now go through to this next qualifying stage called Super Pole, which manages to potentially mix up that grid a bit more. So hopefully Mitch can still hang on to first place. But it's quite an interesting way of doing things but qualifying in this race is so important because every race is a street race which makes overtaking really hard so if you can get first on the grid massive advantage well done Mitch look who I found the two most petrol head people in this entire city. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we are uh, entertaining ourselves in an uh, electric car race. Yeah. yeah so so uh... you might recognize this guy. We were tearing it through Norway. Yeah. You were in the GT3. Yeah. And you also daily a G63. Uh, yeah. Just to just to put some context into how abstract our presence is here, <laughs> yeah. and you guys must know Luke from Cars with Luke. Um, we've also been talking about doing a collab soon, so it's really nice that we we've have. bumped into each other. Yes. But we've just been sharing sort of our thoughts really on this new movement. Yeah. Thoughts Mad. thoughts from a person whose last video was a 599 GTO. Yeah, that's that's difficult because uh, yesterday screaming around in a 599 GTO. 
and today, naturally aspirated V12. Naturally aspirated V12, yeah. and today something quite different. For like sure. I'm very excited. I'm very open to it. Absolutely. Very yeah. open to it. Cars are super impressive, mm. but it's very difficult when you see a car go past and it's this gust of wind kind sure. of. Yeah. It's it's going to take some time. Absolutely. But then again, it's it. like an yeah. unstoppable movement. Like you can't stop. Oh, it's happening. Like for it, sure. It, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it happening. Yeah. 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 Like, so, yeah. have either of you spent any time driving an electric car? I've been in some Teslas. Teslas. Like, okay. There's a lot no. of them in Oslo. Yeah. None. Not so much. So no. my first drive in a proper electric car was yesterday oh, wow. in the Jaguar I Pace. Okay. Right? Yeah, now cool. I have driven a, fo a Formula E car, but I don't class that as like a proper. Mm. You know, two great things. Vast amount of torque. Yeah. Um, and I have to tell you, the the brake regen becomes addictive to see how many miles you can get back off it. Yeah. So it is odd how when you step in it, you do mm. uh, like adopt this different mindset, and it just it, it it makes it a sense of occasion in its in its own right. Having said that, what I'm not apprehensive about, but excited to see how they tackle it, is how they're going to differentiate the sort of drivetrains between something which is a more practical SUV style car yeah. like the I-Pace and then the supercars which will inevitably come soon. How are we going to um, engineer in the things that pull at our heartstrings? Yeah, right? it's a hard job for the future, yeah it is. It is right. I think from the cars that we often get excited about, let's face it, they're not cars that we need, yeah. they're cars that we want. And yeah. it all comes from here. Of course. Right? Yeah. So what are they what what are they gonna dial in to make these things tick? Yeah, to go in the soul. That's it, yeah. Because from a daily driver point of view, I'm open to electric right now. Yeah. In fact, electric and self-driving, I get in it now. Mm. Because then I can edit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> While I'm going, yeah. that would be great. <laughs> yeah. But for when I want to drive, yeah. that's what I want to yeah. see. What's next? I, I think we all agree from a, a daily application, that's cool. And I yeah. think that really, in the real world, has much more of a wider implication because most yeah. people who are driving cars are just using them as their dailies. Yeah. So in the bigger car sphere, that's a, a massive tick. Yeah. I think it's for the the petrol heads Motorsport, and the right? sort of driving yeah. enthusiasts. It's a challenge for the manufacturer 100% yeah, to really like convince me to like love it. That's it man. It and as I mentioned, Luke and I are going to try and team up and work on a, a a video surrounding a very special manual yeah, car. Yeah, right? He just told me something yeah, yeah. about a certain manual a game car. Changer. It was game changer. That has just yeah. questioned my recent moves. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's leave it there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to say so much right <laughs> no, now. No more. Yeah. We're, we're going to, listen, the, the build up's coming. We're yeah, going to make okay. this happen because yeah. I really want to experience yeah, this. Yeah. Now I'm going to uh, go and check out the, the race. I'm here with Jaguar. Uh, Mitch Evans is on pole. And hopefully he's, he's going to hold that and take, I think it would be Jaguar's first win in Formula E. So fingers crossed. Let's hit it. Welcome to the grid. Now this is one of the fantastic things about Formula E is the access. We are on the start finish straight or the starting grid of Formula E. To, to kind of try and get this kind of access in Formula One, you've either got to be part of the team or somebody very important. And if you take a look at this, you'll see that there are so many people here really embracing all of the fans. The other great thing for us today is that we are with Jaguar, who are on pole, which means we get to go all the way to the very front. How are you feeling, man? Feeling good. Congratulations. Yeah, first time I'm polling for me. Fantastic, Both man. Me and the team, so yeah, it's yeah. been a big moment. Fabulous. But now we need to convert it, so uh, it, yeah, yeah. Well, it's exciting. I don't want to take your brain space up too much, because yeah. I know this is obviously a very uh, significant moment, but uh, hopefully see you in the same position at the end. Yeah, that'll be good. Thanks, mate. Thank Have a good one, Dean. Have a great race. All right, so this is another process which is unique to Formula E, is cooling the cars down with dry ice. So they have this, this cylinder here which is packed full of dry ice, and then they blow the cold air, look at that, straight out inside the car, making sure these batteries are kept cool in this intense heat. What you can't tell here is it's about 30 degrees and everyone is practically melting. And this is their solution, packing it out with dry ice. It seems to be incredibly effective and let's face it, it looks really cool too. Switzerland, it's Mitch Evans on pole position, not to alongside him on the front row, but this could be a deciding race in the season four championship. Evans on pole, not to a second, all five lights are off.
All right, so I'm watching the race from the hospitality on the big screen, but it looks like Mitch has managed to maintain his pole for the whole shot. See how it turns out for the race, but looking at the screen, it's so close. Pits. Bit of a bittersweet ending, really. Unfortunately, Mitch was unable to hold on to first. No massive fault of his own. The guy was driving like a hero, but there was absolute carnage on the grid. I don't think I've ever seen a grid in recent days shift quite so much. We had safety cars, we had crashes. That's the nature of this race. Because it's such close proximity racing, a small accident has a knock-on effect and there's carnage and bits of cars on the track all over the place. So. Sweet because Mitch managed to get himself pole, bitter because he ended up in seventh. Still in the points, massively well driven and thoroughly enjoyable to watch. But it's not the end of the road there. The next race is in New York of all places. And this is the beauty of Formula E. The locations in which they can race is like no other. Imagine a street race in New York. It's gonna be fantastic. As always guys, thanks for watching. Massive thank you to Jaguar Racing for having me as their guest and giving me such incredible access. See you next time. Ciao.